Hi, I'm Laylee, and today I'm going to dive into a subject that stirs up a lot of debate, and that's are cat collars safe? You might be thinking that I'm probably the last person you should be listening to because I'm one of the founders of Superkit and we sell cat collars and that would make me biased. But I trained as a biologist. Today, I work as an accredited animal behavior technician and where there is confusion and controversy, my strategy is always just to go straight for the facts. So today, I'm gonna to share these facts with you and give you the tools that you need to make the right decision for your wonderful cat. Let's just get straight to the heart of the matter and look at the safety record of collars because I'm sure you, like me, have heard these terrible stories about cats getting injured or caught by their collars. Now, we need to look back in history to understand this and look at the original design of the cat collar, which is just a fixed band with a fixed buckle and the idea is that it stays on. These weren't actually that popular, but in the 1970s and 80s, somebody invented the flea collar where the band is impregnated with a special chemical to repel fleas, and these took off. Loads of people used them, but at the same time, vets started to see an increased instance of collar-related injuries, and they were really concerned and went on a public information campaign to let us all know of the risks. In response, cat collar designers started to think about ways to design a collar, especially for cats, that could keep up with their adventures, but keep them safe. And they really ended up going down two main roads. The first is an elasticated collar. So a collar that's either entirely made out of elastic or that has an elastic section. And the idea is that this will stretch if your cat is caught and they'll be able to wriggle free. And then the other road the designers went down was a breakaway cat collar. So this is a collar with a special buckle that breaks open if it's under any force. But do any of these collar designs actually work? Do they make our cats safer? Well, in 2013, a team of scientists asked 107 vets about the collar-related injuries that they had seen in their practice. Now, these vets collectively had over a millennium and a half of experience. So they had seen a lot of cats and they were very well placed to help answer this question. In this study, the vets reported that they had seen collectively 686 collar related injuries, of which one was very sadly fatal. The rest weren't. Now, this sounds like a really big number, but it's important to remember that this is across the vets entire collective careers. When you crunch the numbers, it actually works out at seeing one of these injuries every 2.3 years of their practice. But the most important thing about this study is that it also reveals that not all collars are created equal. So when you break it down by instances where the type of collar was recorded, we can then see that 42% of the injuries these vets were seeing were caused by flea collars. 39% were caused by the elasticated collars. So actually you can see people put the elastic in thinking it would help, but it's really not much better than the flea collar in terms of safety. And 18% were caused by collars with a fixed buckle with no safety mechanism incorporated at all. And as you can see, none of these injuries were caused by a collar with a breakaway buckle. So really the safety record of breakaway cat collars speaks for itself. But you might be thinking, why even take any risk? Why does my cat need to wear a collar? Well, here is a stock statistic. There was a wide ranging study in the United States that looked at missing pets. And they found that in cats, less than 2% of them would be reunited with their owners. Whereas in dogs, the figure was between 15 and 19%. So there is a huge divide here. So what's going on here? Well, they found that in cats and dogs, rates of microchipping were roughly the same. So in cats, it was 7%. In dogs, it was 8%. But when they asked the owners which animals were wearing visible ID, so a collar with an ID tag, they found a huge difference. In cats, about 14% of cats were wearing a visible ID when they were lost, whereas in dogs, the figure was 43%. So why isn't a microchip on its own enough? Now, don't misunderstand me. Microchips are essential. Do not skip that step. You must microchip your cat. But is a collar and ID tag on top of a microchip a useful thing to have? 
I want you to imagine, it's hard to do, but I want you to imagine that your cat has gone missing. They weren't wearing a collar and ID tag, but they were microchipped. And they have been lucky enough to run into not a bad person, not a car, but a good Samaritan, someone like you and me who loves cats and who wants to help. When they look at your cat, they can't see that they're microchipped and they don't have a microchip scanner to read those crucial details within. They're gonna see a cat that doesn't have a collar and ID, so it doesn't immediately look like it's owned and is loved. It probably looks a bit more like a stray if it's been a couple of days and it's hungry and it's begging for food. So maybe they just let it wander past, maybe they think I'll give the cat some food because it's hungry, maybe they take it in and adopt it as their own, but in none of these scenarios is that person bringing your cat home to you. You might think, well, I would put up missing posters and it's a really important thing to do. But in my personal experience of having my cat lost and putting up missing posters, I was bombarded with false sightings of people, well-meaning, lovely people who thought they had seen my cat but had seen another cat altogether. So it's so lucky that they weren't all picking these cats up and taking them to a shelter or a vet's to have their chip scanned because there would have been dozens of misplaced pets. But the reality is, this just doesn't happen anyway. People are busy and concerned about manhandling animals they don't know, so they will not get involved in that way. Your cat is likely to only make it to a vet or a shelter to have their chip scanned if something kind of unfortunate happens, like they run into a car or um, they have been adopted by someone who thought they were astray. Now, I want you to imagine the alternative scenario. Your cat was wearing a collar and ID tag when they went missing. You put missing posters up, and now the person who runs into your cat is able to very quickly verify whether the cat that they're seeing in the street is the same one on the missing poster. They'll be like, oh yes, that's Lola. I can see her name on the missing poster and on the tag, and I've got a number here so I can phone her mum and get her straight home. I don't even have to involve the vets at all. If your cat's an indoor-only cat, and let's remember, indoor-only cats do go missing. In one study of missing pets, they found that 40% of the missing cat population were indoor-only cats. You can write on their ID tag, I shouldn't be outside. So simple, anyone who runs into your cat will read, be able to read their tag, and they'll know that they need to contact mum or dad to bring this missing cat home. So we've established that breakaway cat collars are the safest type of cat collar and you know that you want to put one with an ID tag on your cat in addition to their microchip to help bring them home if they are missing. But there are some top safety tips that can make your safe collar even safer and most importantly, make sure it stays on so it can be doing that important work of helping to identify your cat. The first thing to look at is your cat's collar fit. Now, this is an area that I just see a load of misinformation in. I really want you to kind of focus on the important stuff here. Your cat's collar should not be too tight, that is true, but it definitely should not be too loose because a loose collar is a collar that can get caught on things in the environment and it will pop the breakaway um, buckle and it will fall off. So, Follow your manufacturer's recommendations, but here at Superkit, our collars are very soft and they're designed to be kind of comfy enough to be worn close to your cat's body for this kind of core safety reason. So on a Superkit collar, you wanna be able to slide one fingertip between your collar and your cat's body when it's on. No more, no less, that is the perfect fit. The second thing is a correct introduction because our cats are not born knowing how to wear collars. It takes a simple introduction process to gradually settle them in to the idea of wearing a collar. I'll link in the description below to our guide on how to do this, but it is so worthwhile doing because a cat that is happy and settled in their collar is not going to be fussing at it or clawing at it in a way that could damage the collar or be unsafe, or if it's a breakaway collar could lead to the buckle opening and their collar coming off. Number three, you want to look for a collar that is slim line and not bulky. Bulky collars or bulky accessories on your cat's collar are snag hazards. And of course, that is the thing that we're looking to avoid at all costs. Look for a collar that is soft, lightweight, flexible and supple, that can conform to your cat's bodies and hug them perfectly as they go about their daily adventures. And last but definitely not least, 
if you're using a breakaway cat collar, which you definitely should, you need to find one with a breakaway buckle that is appropriate for your cat's current body weight because it's that body weight acting on the buckles that's going to cause it to pop open. And if your cat isn't heavy enough to do that, it won't work. You can check the manufacturer's guidelines on the safe kind of minimum weight for your breakaway cat collar. Here at Superkit, we actually offer them with a choice of breakaway cat collar. So we have our adult style breakaway collars that are suitable for cats over 2.5 kilos or 5.5 pounds. But we also have a kitten breakaway collar that just has a more gentle mechanism inside the breakaway buckle. So it's going to safely open for kittens that are under that weight. And that's really all there is to it. So I hope today's video has been helpful in giving you the facts you need to make the right decision for you and your cat. Now, obviously here at Superkit, we make cat collars and I wouldn't do this if I didn't believe in it. We pour all of this knowledge and the latest science on safety into our collars. And if you would like to treat your cat to one of ours, I'll pop a little 10% discount code for you in the description below. Now, don't forget to subscribe because if you're like me and you love cats, but you also like facts, we have some great videos coming up and I just know that you are gonna love them.